watched the finishing touches of the movie. Um, what do you think was the best part? What did you like about it? See how it was all clipped and edited yeah. and the cutaways and everything and then with the lighting and he made me look menacing which I've, I've never seen myself as a menacing <laughs> kind of guy. And but I did mention a choice and you do have one. You can be hung by rope where death is quick or you can take the punishment behind the door. The choice is yours. I just thought, if you had a choice, what would you do? You know, are we that afraid of the, yeah. the unknown that we would not take a chance? Usually in, in films or anything like that, they didn't pay the money. Yeah. So I just kind of twisted it and thought, if they, didn't, if they paid all the money, did what they were supposed to do, but didn't do it the right way or in the right time, would that be cho taken as a sign of disrespect? And so that's where that came. Man, this is wrong. I paid you back. You disrespected me. In my eyes, you disrespected me. That's what's wrong. Uh, I think Victor sort of um, crossed between the legitimate, smooth businessman, but you know, there's yeah. an undercurrent of mm -hmm. uh, deceit, but I don't think that, he doesn't see it that way. He yeah. sees it as everything as being legit. You know, that that isn't and that that is. Dave. You're Oliver Ralph, the bad guy. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about how you prepared for that role. Well, once I, I looked at the script there to, to see what type of character, I played around a little bit with the character to see, uh, from reading it to see what he was a gambler. But at the same time, you know, gamblers willing to take a lot of chances. He was younger, you know, and uh, a little bit naive, but at the same time, he had that cockiness because of the naive. So uh, that's why I jumped into the character to have a little bit of like, I'm going to stand my own. How did you prepare for the role? Actually, um, Art let me know that Rudy was the guy that just kind of made sure that everything went the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. He said he was Victor's uh, right hand man and. Uh, just didn't do too much more than that. Just kind of, kind of thought this guy. He said this guy just kind of hangs back. And I read the, over the script, and it called for some pretty tough guys. You know, they weren't doing anything out, outrageous, but mm -hmm. you know, so I just imagined what it'd be like if I was a hood. You know, and uh, <laughs> this guy I had to get money from him. You know, what, what would I do? You know. Uh -huh. And he asked me if I could be in the movie at the end of my final in his class. And <laughs> what were you thinking when he asked you that? I was kind of nervous because I was, I was walking up, I turned my final in and he started to talk. I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah. He said, I'm making a movie, would you want to be in it? I said, yeah, sure. As long as you pass the class, right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that the cast did an excellent job of uh, conveying what the uh, director was trying to convey in the story and it seemed real to me even coming onto the set and see the guys dressed. I, was, I didn't know uh, a number of them, so I uh -huh. thought they were really, <laughs> really gangsters. You know, oh. I came in, I didn't know who was who. 
It was kind of nice to find out that they had day jobs. You know? Like, well, what do I wear? He goes, well, you know, he goes, well, this is the role. He goes, you know, a suit or something. So I busted out the wingtips and the whole <laughs> thing, the old tie. And he came uh -huh. down and he goes, that's exactly what I had in mind. He said, he goes, you can just stand there and kind of be cool. And I have never really thought of myself that way. But, mm -hmm. you know, I just kind of do my thing and whatever happens, happens. So uh, he's like, he goes, you can epitomize cool. And I'm like, oh, OK. So <laughs> <laughs> the best part was watching the characters uh, come alive mm -hmm. because there was times when we were holding the cameras and uh, DC would go into this thing you disrespected me and we we're actually moving back <laughs> like like he was saying it to us we did stop. complete Whole take shots. right we never if they messed up we didn't stop we kept on going why did you choose to do it like that okay. it's a rhythm for the actors because uh, basically what they could do is they don't have to worry about oh I blew that line we need to stop mm -hmm. they just keep on going so I figured throughout that time of them doing it they're gonna get great stuff but if you kind of keep stopping them they kind of get out of the mode yeah really out of the mode and they're you know they're kind of used to whenever they make a mistake stop mm -hmm. you know and that completely throws them off so he's an awesome director he you know he's a very you know very subtle, knows what he wants, but he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, uh, confident enough to say, okay, you know, what do you guys think? You know, yeah. it's how, you know, gonna let this ebb and flow, but if he doesn't, you know, if something was not exactly what he was looking for, he'd be like, hey, this is more what yeah. we had in mind. So uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, the cast was great to work with, too. We had a, we had a really good time doing it. The thing that I really like about Art, he's, he's very um, uh, giving, uh -huh. very open. Um, so he's willing to, to take uh, your suggestions and let you um, let the character evolve from even your heart, your mind, and mm -hmm. your spirit. And, and not all directors and uh, writers do that. So I, I appreciate that with art. Uh, DC was on my mind because um, I worked with him before and it was like a really, really good experience. But there's a, there's a gentleness to him and then there's a... Uh, that I think that he, which I didn't know he could do. Yeah, like he could be really rough, you know, go from being very charming to very like, hey, you, you, you ticked me off. I really liked how he put the music in. The music coming into the movie changed because we were all here watching it as yeah. we performed it. And when he put the music behind it, it changed everything and made it, it brought it full circle and made it a movie. Well, the music basically came from like the 70s. If you've watched mm -hmm. like, like yeah. Shaft and Superfly, they, oh, have okay. this, this, they have this distinct ch -ch -ch -ch, that kind of thing. So I wanted to, to do that in the score. The, the question that was on the, in the movie was either the news or the unknown. Um, do you see yourself picking a person who would have picked the news, or would you have picked the unknown? Mm, I tell you what, I think I would have picked the unknown because I've, I've always, I've done that all my life. I mean, even with my chosen profession. It with the news, you know, it's in the back of your mind. There's always, in my mind, anyways, there's always a chance for escape. <laughs> so as long as, as long as I'm alive, there's always a chance for escape. Would I take the news to the door? What type of guy are you? And be honest. I take the door, full speed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you have good actors to start off, a good cast, and you you're taking care of them, their questions, right off the bat, it, it, it goes real smooth. And, and that's what happened here, good location, and good cast. And we did it, like, I believe just one day. Let's see what we have. Look, it's Oliver North. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.